At the age of 22, I was severely in loan debt, living with my mom and working in the service industry. I tried going to college but couldn't finish. I was what the US government referred to as exceptionally poor. After Pell Grant, loans, working part-time, and qualifying for various scholarships, I still wasn't able to finish. I got kicked out for being a financial liability and was told I could go back once I finished paying off some of my loans. Needless to say, I was devastated. I spent every day feeling like trash, ashamed of being broke and living with my mom. I knew I had to turn my life around, but I had no idea how. So I started thinking, is there someone I know who overcomes every obstacle? I didn't have any adult role models in my life that were like that, so I needed to look to someone fictional. Goku. Now, keep in mind, I'm 22 and desperate, so a lot of what I'm going to say won't really track. Uh, any reasonable person will hear what I'm about to explain and recognize this thought process as silly. Regardless, I thought that if I wanted to be successful, then I needed to be like Goku, because he is able to overcome every obstacle in his way. Uh, how does he do it? I had no idea. But I thought that if I started doing the things he does, then maybe the rest will just kind of figure itself out. So I decided I needed to start working out and then somehow everything else would just fall into place. And uh, you know what? It did. Uh, I am now happily married, debt-free, working my dream job, and very proud of the man I've become. Not because I went to the gym, but because of the things I learned by going to the gym. Most people know what it takes to be successful, but some of us need to learn these things. I was the latter, and the gym taught me what necessary skills I was lacking and how I could improve upon them. The first determining factor in whether or not you can be successful lies in a solid foundation of basic skills that we need to continually improve upon. So here's what I learned. Uh, the first is that dedication is always going to be better than motivation. So uh, when I first started going to the gym, I purchased an entire year's membership up front. It was only $100, uh, but that was a butt ton of money for me at the time. Just to give you pr some perspective, uh, that was half of my weekly paycheck. It hurt to pay that money, uh, but that was kind of the point. I figured that sacrificing that money would be enough to motivate me to go to the gym every day for the next year. And it worked for a while, but soon I didn't care enough about the money I lost. Then I started to contemplate on how I could stay motivated, and this is the trap that everyone falls into. Uh, there is, unfortunately, no such thing as staying motivated. Motivation is a fleeting pipe dream and exists in a temporary space at the front of all your new ventures. Motivation will never follow you past the honeymoon phase of a new journey, except for sporadic, unplanned occasions. If you want to be successful, you need to instead stay dedicated. Eventually, your motivation will disappear and you will no longer have a natural feeling or desire to move forward. Dedication is the ability to do all things we know we must do regardless of whether we want to do them or not. Dedication can be as simple as brushing your teeth daily, consistently showing up for work on time, or just paying your bills. These are things you need to do or else your teeth will fall out, you'll lose your job, and you'll eventually be evicted. Uh, we don't have a desire or an excitement to do these things, but we do them anyway because we know we have to. But I didn't really have to go to the gym. It wasn't necessary for survival or keeping my teeth. So in order to stay dedicated, I needed to first remind myself of why I was going to the gym in the first place. I was going as a way to learn and practice the necessary skills required to be successful. Then it was understanding that I can't have what I wanted while also doing the opposite of acquiring that desire. You can't keep your teeth and refuse to brush them. You can't uh, keep your job and refuse to show up on time. You can't keep your home and refuse to pay the rent or mortgage. And you can't become a better version of yourself by living the same life you've always lived. Going to the gym will help increase the strength of your muscles, but forcing myself to go to the gym daily strengthened my ability to stay dedicated. And I am now able to apply that strength to anything else in my life. I can now dedicate myself to things in which I know will improve my quality of life, despite them not feeling urgent or necessary for survival. The next super important thing that the gym taught me was time management and that I sucked at it. Uh, once I became dedicated, I learned that I wasn't very cognizant of my time. There are many occasions in which I would have to make time late at night or early in the morning to hit the gym because I didn't know how to properly manage the time that I had. For example, I knew I had to be at work by a certain hour in the afternoon. I would sleep in a little, go about my morning routine, get some food, change into my gym clothes, 
and get to the gym. Unfortunately, I would get to the gym and realize I didn't have enough time to actually do both my cardio and weights. I knew this because the treadmill told me how long it took me to run a mile or my weekly 5k. When factoring that time into the time that I had before work, I knew that I was running late. So instead, I had to change into my work clothes and I had to put the gym off until later that night. And in the process, I would be sacrificing sleep. Uh, but I had to go because I was dedicated. Uh, at first I thought, oh, there just isn't enough time, and I was unnecessarily punishing myself by working out super late or super early when I was in fact the problem. Eventually, I began to notice how long it took me to do things like brush my teeth, shower, cook, and eat breakfast, and drive from point A to point B. I was then able to begin taking these times into consideration and could better plan my gym schedule in advance. I now knew that if I did simple things like waking up a little bit earlier, eating on the way, or brushing my teeth while I showered, um, I could then get to the gym in time for my workout instead of having to make time later in the day or that night. The next super important lesson that I learned, which I think is probably one of the most important lessons that any adult should learn, and as I get older, I see um, an increasing number of adults who have never learned this lesson, uh, the ability to admit that I was wrong. Uh, so when I first started going to the gym, I thought I knew what I had to do. Run really fast for long periods of time, lift really heavy weights until my muscles hurt. I had spent my whole life listening to fitness influencers, TV shows, and movies mold my expectations of what my gym routine should look like. Saying things like, no pain, no gain, and train insane or stay the same. So I was constantly pushing myself, spending hours at the gym. Luckily, I was dedicated, so no matter how much I hated it, I continued going. But after so many months, I wasn't making any progress. This whole time, I thought going to the gym would be as simple as just showing up and completely exhausting myself. It was a very humbling experience to admit that I didn't know as much as I thought I did. Uh, it sounds silly, but everyone you know, even you, has adopted a perception molded by the influences of media consumed either actively or in passing. So if I wanted to see any progress, I had to face facts. I was nowhere near as smart or as knowledgeable as I thought I was, and I had to take steps to correct this. So I began researching and talking to people who knew more than me. Uh, this was hard for me to do because I always saw myself as intelligent and I equated intelligence to having an immediate answer and solution without the need for consultation from others. Uh, this is a horrible definition of intelligence and ironically it was that very definition that stopped me from reaching my intellectual potential. Uh, by interpreting intelligence as an innate ability to already know things, I was missing every opportunity to acquire the knowledge that I needed. I thought that seeking solutions from others was the same as being dumb or ignorant because I thought that by admitting someone knew better than me, that must mean I'm not as intelligent as I thought I was. Uh, I have found that it is in fact the inverse. A uh, real lack of intelligence is digging your heels in and refusing to compromise on what you originally thought to be true. As it turns out, all the fitness influencers, motivational talks on YouTube, um, that's all just ego stroking bullshit. Uh, growing your muscles or losing weight didn't have to be this grueling torture for hours at a time. In fact, you don't even have to do it every single day. The rise and grind perception I had based on movies, TV, and motivational YouTube speeches was just plain wrong. So it turns out you don't have to run until you feel your heart beating in your teeth every day and you don't have to work your muscles until they become so sore it hurts to move. In fact, working out to such an extent can have you moving in a direction opposite of your goals. Having the ability to admit my expectations were wrong made my gym routine a lot easier and a lot more manageable. Uh, but more importantly, I was able to apply this lesson to my professional and my personal life. I wasn't able to truly grow until I began to approach myself with skepticism in my own knowledge and abilities. Admitting to myself that I was not as knowledgeable as I previously thought uh, has led to me learning many more things much more quickly. Now, just to piggyback off of that rise and grind culture discussion, another very important lesson that I learned from the gym is understanding your own limits, my own limits, 
and uh, working within them is what truly leads to maximum growth. Uh, when everybody goes to the gym for the first time, they always try to lift as much as possible. For some people, like myself, it was more about appearances. I was nowhere near the largest guy at the gym, and I wanted to look like I belonged there. This led me into another trap that many first-time gym goers fall into, and that was thinking that I should lift something just because I could. If I can curl a 30-pound weight one time, then that must mean I can do it 11 more times for a full set, and then I'll complete that set two or three more times for a full exercise, and then I'll do three more exercises just like that with the same mentality. Uh, very often, we either bite off more than we can chew, or we set these expectations for ourselves we can barely meet. Working at or past your limits is great, but what you are able to accomplish isn't the same as your limits. Like, the things that you can accomplish, that's not actually your limit. Uh, just because I can meet a very tight deadline in the office doesn't mean I should set that same expectation for every project. Much like lifting too heavy just because your body can will lead to a poor workout and poor results, treating other aspects of your life with that same expectation will lead to poor quality. Uh, forcing myself to bust ass on every project rather than having a better understanding of how much time I should be allocating is the difference between work that can continually increase in quality over long periods of time, or work that will never live up to its potential or my expectations. Uh, setting these super tight deadlines for every single project results in sacrificing a quality that requires more time than what I'm agreeing to allocate to. So just because you can curl 30 pounds doesn't really mean that you should. It wasn't until I dropped back down to the 15 pound weight that I finally started to see the circumference in my arms grow. It felt weird to drop my weights, just like it felt weird to set longer, more manageable deadlines. I didn't want the buff gym bros to think I was weak, and I didn't want my coworkers in the office to think that I was slacking off or bad at my job. But if I didn't have the humility necessary to understand what my own limits were and how to properly work within them, then I would never see real progress. My arms would never get bigger, and neither would the quality of my work. The next super important thing that I learned, and I cannot stress this one enough, uh, this, is, this is actually one of my favorite lessons that I learned, which is uh, putting responsibility before pleasure and understanding that the sooner you start something, the quicker it'll be over. Really, I guess more that latter half. So uh, as much as I love going to the gym, there are always these days that I would rather day drink and play video games, and that's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with doing the things that you wanna do unless you put off the things you have to do. Uh, so for instance, Going to the gym this past decade has turned me into someone who can't truly enjoy himself unless all of my responsibilities are taken care of. Like, I can play video games and start day drinking at any time. Nobody is stopping me. Um, I'm an adult. I make my own decisions. But I know I won't truly enjoy it if there are dishes in the sink or the trash needs to be taken out or some other kind of responsibility that I should have taken care of first. As I've become older, my life has become more complex and busy. Even with my razor sharp time management skills, I can't always make time for everything, which is why I make it a point to get things done as soon as possible. I know that I won't be able to enjoy my day off if I skip the gym, but I also want to maximize the amount of time I have to goof off and be lazy. So every night I go to bed at 10 p.m. and every morning I wake up at 6 a.m. to hit the gym and get back to my gaming chair before 8. Uh, if the trash needs taken out, I grab it on my way out the door. If there are dishes from dinner, I wash, dry, and put them away before bed so they aren't around when the gaming time is supposed to start. So uh, I do things in this way to handle all of my responsibilities as quickly as possible so that I can maximize the amount of free time I have. Even this YouTube video, I woke up at 6 a.m. to hit the gym and immediately hopped on my computer to begin editing once I showered. Uh, I know that if I hustle, I can have this done before lunch, and I can spend the rest of my day playing Triangle Strategy, reading One Piece, rewatching Daria, uh, you know, whatever it is that I want. So by putting my responsibilities first and getting to them as soon as possible, you have to do both of these things at the same time, very important. Um, I can both maximize the amount of time I have and the enjoyment I get from being unproductive. Everyone tells me that I'm crazy for hitting the gym at 6 a.m. every day, but that's exactly why I do it. The sooner you start, the sooner it'll be over. I apply that philosophy to all of my responsibilities and obligations. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, no matter how good your time management skills are, sometimes you can't actually 
get things done, like the things that you want to do. Uh, so another really important lesson that I learned over the course of my, I guess, gym experience um, has been the ability to forgive myself for things that like I can't control, that like aren't my fault. So uh, when you start going to the gym, you will eventually form a habit that is very much like smoking. It is uncanny. And I know this because I used to smoke like a pack a day when I was younger. Uh, once you've consistently gone to the gym enough, you'll start to crave it like a cigarette. And whenever you don't go to the gym or you miss the opportunity to go to the gym, you'll get cranky and feel like crap, just like a nicotine withdrawal. Uh, the big difference is that nicotine withdrawal makes you feel like crap because of what you're missing in the cigarette, and missing the gym makes you feel like crap because now it feels like you're letting yourself down. Unfortunately, as you get older, this will just happen. No matter how much precaution you take to ensure a desired outcome, life will sometimes just get in the way. For the longest time, I would put this blame on myself, or I would just feel horrible because I missed out on the progress that I could have been making towards my goal. Even now, I will beat myself up regardless of whether or not it's my fault when I miss a deadline or I didn't meet a goal that I had set for myself. It is unfortunate that we can plan for every possible contingency imaginable and still come up short. The important thing to remember is that it's not your fault. Uh, I can plan to get to the gym at 6 a.m., but maybe the road is blocked due to a huge car crash. Uh, not a problem, right? Because I can just go during my lunch hour, but then maybe an emergency comes up at work and I need to do that while eating my lunch. Uh, totally fine. I can just go after work. Uh, only now, my wife is working late because she had an emergency come up, so I have to go like pick up the stuff for dinner and cook, so totally fine. I'll grab dinner, I'll get home, I'll prepare the meal, eat with my wife uh, when she gets home, and then I will have just enough time to hit the gym and get back before bed, um, except that, you know, once we finish dinner, dinner, maybe some other kind of like unmitigated disaster happens, like another car wreck or some kind of responsibility or obligation I forgot about, or maybe the gym just like catches fire. Like, I don't know. Regardless of what keeps me from getting to the gym or meeting any other goal in my life, um, I need to understand these things aren't my fault. It's okay to be annoyed when this happens. Like, I, you have every right to be, right? You know, you, you took every step to make sure that you could get done the thing that you wanted to get done. But, um, you know, as long as you did everything that you actually could, as long as I did everything that I, I actually uh, could do to try and make this happen, um, we shouldn't beat ourselves up when they don't. We shouldn't put the blame on ourselves when things outside of our control stop us from accomplishing the things that we want to accomplish. Now, the last and I think probably the most important lesson that I've learned, just kind of like wrap up this whole video and tie it all together, uh, is that there is no compromising on becoming a better person. So, uh, like I said, this is probably one of the biggest lessons. Um, I used to get into this argument all the time with an old coworker. Uh, we'll call him Dan. Dan was only like 19, but he already looked like a baby gorilla that had escaped from the zoo. I mean, the dude was huge. And he unfortunately would equate things like his physical health, his knowledge, and his work ethic uh, solely to the size of his arms. He genuinely believed that just going to the gym would solve his problems. Uh, for example, Dan would drink, I shit you not, five monster energy drinks every single day. I knew this because I would sell them to him. Uh, we worked at like a grocery store and uh, I would constantly give him crap explaining like, you know, hey Dan, your kidneys are probably gonna fail before you're 30 or there's no way you aren't gonna have heart problems very soon. Um, but Dan would always respond with conviction in his eyes and a demeanor and tone that would like seek to educate me on the matter. He would say, no, 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 Nikki, that's uh, totally okay because I drink so much water and sweat so much at the gym, you know, it really flushes out the system. Um, and he really believed it. He, uh, he had a heart attack when he was 22, by the way. Uh, he lived, like he's alive now, he's totally fine. Um, so it's, it's fine to clown on him, um, but, the, the point is, just because, like, I would run a mile every day, that didn't clear me to smoke a pack of Newports whenever I felt like it, you know? You're either healthy or you're not. You're either becoming a better person or you're the same person you were yesterday. If I really wanted to avoid the negative repercussions of smoking or drinking copious amounts of caffeine, then I would quit smoking or drinking five monster energy drinks a day. Uh, doing cardio and staying hydrated are great things to do and will significantly improve your health, unless you're doing them for the wrong reasons or see them as some kind of like counterweight 
to an unhealthy lifestyle, a counterweight to being the person who knows they should be doing better. Um, or all these lessons I learned from the gym don't mean jack shit if I refuse to practice them. Uh, for example, it's great that I learned about dedication, that one that we talked about at the beginning of the video, but uh, if I'm only applying that dedication to my gym routine, then it doesn't matter, and going to the gym is a complete waste of my time rather than a productive one. If I'm not applying the lesson of dedication to my career or my responsibilities, then I would have gotten the same result had I just kept my money and stayed home and played video games all day. Doing cardio is a way to offset smoking and drinking lots of water to flush, quote unquote, the caffeine out of your system shows that you have identified the problem, which is great. It's the first step to becoming a better version of yourself. But if you're refusing to apply the philosophy of self-betterment outside of your cardio and your hydration, then you might as well just save yourself the trouble and double down on the nicotine and energy drinks. It doesn't matter how far you run or how hydrated you are you're still doing damage to your body on a daily basis. More importantly, you aren't actually solving the problem. You're just masking it or prolonging it. You're still the same exact person tomorrow or next month or even a year from now uh, that you were when you first decided to start doing the running or hydrating. Uh, just like I had identified that I have trouble meeting deadlines and dedicating myself to large projects, Dan had identified that he had a caffeine problem. The difference is that, uh, you know, going to the gym for me was meant to be a way of finding the solution, whereas Dan saw the gym as a means of avoiding it. Uh, I was able to take the lessons of dedication I learned from my experience with the gym and apply them to quitting smoking. I was it was it was genuinely genuinely like the hardest thing that I had ever done in my life, but I did it. Um, and Dan, on the other hand, only remained dedicated to the gym and refused to take that lesson home with him, and he had a heart attack. So. Um, now, I'm gonna get a bit meta and break the fourth wall because there is a deeper point to this. Uh, you just watched this whole video, hopefully, and uh, maybe nodded along with some of the things I said, but do you, dear viewer, uh, actually practice any of the things that I, I talked about in this video? Like, if at any point you found yourself saying, yeah, that's so true, is that thing you find to be true a real part of your daily life and who you are, or are you like, are you actively taking steps to becoming a better version of yourself, or are you Dan? Additionally, there is something I want to reiterate in case you missed it. Uh, going to the gym did not solve all my problems. That was the mentality that Dan had, and when I first bought my gym membership, that was the thought that I had too. What really solved all my problems was first being humble enough to admit that I had them, then being able to identify what those problems are, and finally taking active steps every day to make the positive changes necessary to improve upon myself and solve these issues ultimately. Uh, life isn't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep going. The most painful swings we ever take are to our ego or our self-image. And it hurts even more when the fist that hits you comes flying out of the mirror. But you will, I will, never have the ability to solve real problems and move forward until it becomes possible to throw that very necessary punch and eat it for lunch every single day. So yeah, do with all of that what you will. Um, that's, that's the video. That's everything that I wanted to say. But I, I guess I'll, I'll use this like little outro segment as... Um, as a moment to thank everyone. We hit 100 subscribers not too long ago. It was around the time that I had to go on hiatus and 100 subscribers, woo, I uh, didn't think it would happen. I mean, I kind of did, but I guess I didn't think it would happen so fast. It, it, like, it's chump change to larger YouTubers, but um, this 100 subscribers is my 100 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you for helping me grow this channel. And I think in the just the last 30 days, we gained like another 40, which is like a huge uh, sum for a channel as small as mine to get so quickly. So yeah, I just, I thank you guys so much for watching my content. It's pretty wild to think that anyone would care about what I'm doing here, but there's 140 or so of you that do, and I'm appreciative of each and every one of you. So be sure to like and leave a comment. If you're not subscribed, would really appreciate if you subscribe. Um, and I guess that's that. So thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.